Are you a progressive Democrat? I'm a liberal. I think that liberals care about the little guy. Mm -hmm. Liberals care about social justice. Why, why do so many Democrats who are liberal or progressive, why do they seem so hostile to, the, to the, just the idea of school choice? Because it seems very much to speak exactly to those issues I of social justice. I think they've been justice. captured by the special interests and, and the, you know, the teachers union is really about the teachers union. It's about the perpetuation of union hegemony. A former history professor, public school teacher, and New York City politician, Eva Moskowitz has become one of the highest profile figures in the education reform movement, featured everywhere from glamour magazines to the New York Times. Teacher union leaders who correctly view her as an enormous threat to their power are fighting to combat her growing influence. Moskowitz is the founder and CEO of Success Academy, New York City's largest charter school network. These are public schools funded by taxpayers and operate independently from the city's Department of Education. The teachers here don't belong to a union and they don't have tenure, so the school can reward them with higher salaries or fire them if they're not meeting expectations and Success Academy students and parents choose to apply here instead of simply attending the district schools to which they're sent based on where they live. Attracting students hasn't been a problem. With 32 schools spread around New York City, Success Academy posted test results last year that astounded education policy experts. Meanwhile, Moskowitz and her allies have been building a powerful coalition to counter the outsized political influence of organized labor. In the education world, many people just want to know how her schools are performing so well. And what are you doing that other people are not? One of the fundamental differences uh, between us and other schools is the level of rigor mm -hmm. uh, that we have. Okay, so, it's, so what does that mean? What kids are being asked to do now in third grade, we think kids can do that in kindergarten and first grade. We are maniacal about reading. Mm -hmm the amount, the quality of the books we read in school, we read at home. And I think people have forgotten that that is one of the tools in our toolkits, mm -hmm. simply the amount of time that kids are spending on reading and being super engaged in reading, that alone can change outcomes. What's a typical student? I mean, or, or give a kind of demographic background of, uh, you know, where, where are they coming so from? So the vast majority of our kids are black and brown. Uh, the vast majority of our kids uh, are living below the poverty line. Uh, about 15% of our kids are uh, special needs. To get accepted at Success Academy, students enter a random lottery. This year, about 18,000 kids applied and fewer than 20% won a spot. The nail-biting process that families go through when trying to get their kids into a Success Academy school was chronicled in a 2010 feature-length documentary called The Lottery. If you could, would you take in all 18,000? Oh, yeah. What holds you back from doing that? I mean, the, the pushback uh, is pretty intense. Not only do we have elected officials opposing this work, but the bureaucracy uh, impedes us at every turn. It, it's very hard to open schools. Moskowitz's biggest battle on that front happened earlier this year when the newly elected mayor of New York City, Bill de Blasio, denied Success Academy promised space in existing school buildings so that it could open new branches. The move was rooted in a political rivalry between de Blasio and Moskowitz that goes back to their days serving together in the New York City Council more than a decade ago. At a teachers' union-sponsored event during the mayoral race, de Blasio told the crowd, it's time for Eva Moskowitz to stop having the run of the place. She has to stop being tolerated, enabled, supported. Moskowitz and her allies countered by busing 11,000 charter school parents and kids up to the state capitol in Albany to protest. And New York State Governor Andrew Cuomo came out in support. And we are here today to tell you that we stand with you. You are not alone. We will save charter schools. De Blasio retreated. Success Academy could move forward with its expansion plans after all, and state lawmakers quickly passed a bill to protect charter schools from future interference by the mayor. Several months later, Moskowitz and her school choice allies again flexed their political muscle by bringing out more than 20,000 supporters for a rally in Lower Manhattan, this time to draw attention to all the traditional public schools that are underperforming. 
the system is really, it's sort of like the dinosaurs. It's this very antiquated way of doing things. If you want to change anything in the New York City school system, and this is true for urban America, the mayor of the city of New York and the head of the labor union have to agree on every single change to the New York City school system. That is a very difficult, that's a very ossified, that's a very old fashioned way of doing things. We find in our world, we have to be nimble. We have to sometimes lengthen the school day. We have to make a change. We have to adjust to the empirical reality that we're seeing. Where does it go wrong? Because one assumes good faith on the part of you know both teachers and the union that represents them. They want to educate kids, right? So where, oh, yeah. where does, where does stuff go wrong? The bureaucracy has a kind of civil servant imprint, and so uh, it's slow, it's unresponsive. And again, there are good people who are there. It's just the system as a whole is very ossified. The contract is complex and voluminous. It uses a terminology, recall rights, incumbent rights, retention rights. Moskowitz first began speaking out about the corrosive influence of unions on public schools back in November of 2003, when she held hearings in the New York City Council to bring attention to labor contracts and the inane work rules they impose. We must examine these rules and discuss them. New Yorkers must know what the rules are and come to conclusions. She even went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the powerful head of the New York City Teachers Union. Um, I want to take this opportunity to welcome uh, Randy Weingarten, the president of the United Feder Federation of Teachers. That is what the UFT has been trying to get across this year, the issue of helping us, supporting us to help every single child in our charge. Is it the case or is it not the case that a principal could have to accept a candidate sight unseen? There is a plan that was negotiated starting in the mid-60s between the Department could, of could Education you my and the UFT. Just, is it the case that a principal under any circumstance could have to take a candidate without ever having interviewed them? Yes or no? Yes. Thank you. Her colleagues were horrified and did all they could to deflect Moskowitz's questions and to defend the union. If, unless you can change the entire statewide system, that's the system that you have. You must work within it. I looked at the teachers union contract. I looked at the custodians union contract. I looked at the principals union contract. And I was told that, you know, I would be kicked out of office and Possibly my chairmanship would be taken away and all sorts of things like this. But I thought that I had an obligation to look under the hood. And there's some crazy stuff in there. Give, a, give an example. In New York City, there's something called the 10-foot rule, which means that uh, the custodian can paint up to 10 feet, but the painter's union gets to paint above 10 feet. And this is still in force? This is still in okay. force. This was negotiated last in 1965 and it still holds. And what ends up happening is you have the painters union and the custodians union in constant arbitration fighting about it. And for the children, this mopper sweeper distinction means that it's hard to find a fully painted classroom. Teachers do not have to work the lunchroom. It's very hard to run a lunchroom with 500 kids without adults who know and are highly skilled at supervising. So when you gave away that little work rule, you actually affected schools and brought chaos into schools. And there are hundreds of those work rules. At the 2003 hearings, Bill de Blasio, who at the time was a city council member from Brooklyn, defended the union work rules. And I think management everywhere on earth deals with rules, and I'm not saying every rule is perfect by any stretch, but management everywhere on earth deals with rules and other contexts, and good managers find a way to get the most out of people. In those hearings, I mean, you had future Mayor de Blasio defending the teachers' union, defending the existing work rules. You know, where is that coming from? 
Bill's position mm -hmm. was kind of the norm, which is you don't take on the teachers union, you don't look at the contract. The, the head of the teachers union said to me very clearly, we will take you out. And, and, and true did that to, happen? Yes, yes. true, true right. to their word. <laughs> In 2005, when Moskowitz made a run for Manhattan Borough President, the teachers union mobilized against her and she lost in the primary, which at least for the time being ended her political career. Um, but you know, I'm a big girl. I yeah. knew that that was a risk and I decided that it was, you know, sometimes, you know, I think politicians are very used to um, deferring when they're going to be honest and sort of continually postponing working uh, on the issues that matter. I, I felt that, you know, it, it was just my job to uh, look at the issues that I affected teaching and learning. And if that meant that I could no longer be an elected official, so be it. So instead of working to reform the system from within, Moskowitz left politics to build an alternative to the traditional public schools. Do you think your model is replicable or how much of it revolves around you? This seems to be a problem with education reform often that, uh, you know, there's a particular person who kind of creates a model and then as that person uh, either fades out of a situation or whatever, things fall apart. I don't think the district is scalable. Mm -hmm. So I think the question right. we should be, it, it, it's actually we have proof, right. at least in New York City, that the scaling didn't work very well. Right. Right. We've got, uh, in New York State, we've close to a million kids who failed the test. I don't know under what measure that could be a successful scaling experience. Right. So maybe the model is no. not one giant system. Right. Maybe the model is... Um, lots of social entrepreneurs mm -hmm. uh, who have school districts of varying sizes. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I support everything from tax credits to charters to, you know, bold district reform. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to try a bunch of things and we need to see if we can get real talent into the space. Critics of charters argue that schools like Success Academy are excelling in part because they serve kids that come from more stable homes with more involved parents than their public school counterparts. Those parents that are willing to take the effort to enter their kids into a lottery, critics say, are more likely to have children who are motivated to get ahead. Is there a difference between the parents who decide to go into a lottery? So, you know, 18,000 kids are, apply for your spaces. Are those, the parents of those 18,000 kids somehow radically different than, you know, the parents who, say, who either don't care or don't know about lottery I mean, schools? I, this is sort of an unknowable question, but I spend an enormous amount of time with parents. Um, I did before I opened the first school as an elected official going to communities. I did more parent PTA yeah. meetings, um, hundreds and hundreds of meetings. And I have met very few parents who do not deeply, deeply love and care for their children. I think it's on the school to uh, educate and do outreach to parents. We get criticized a lot for marketing. Mm -hmm. And we market because we want to make sure that parents understand the value of what they're getting. Success Academy's critics also claim that the school pushes out struggling kids. At a recent union protest, Reason TV caught up with Michael Mulgrew, who succeeded Randy Weingarten as the head of New York City's Teachers Union. When Ms. Moskowitz serves all children and stop having such very high rates of uh, what we call disappearing students, uh, then I'd be more than happy to talk with her. But first, uh, do what we do and serve the same children we do. There is a fair amount of attrition in your schools? No, actually, that's inaccurate. Our, okay. our attrition yeah. is extremely low, okay. both compared to the district and compared to our co-located schools. Okay, so, um, but I mean, typically, if you have 100 students in first grade, how many will be in seventh grade? We, we lose about 10% a year. Okay. Uh, the district loses about 20% a year, and some of our co-located lose between 30 and 40%. Okay, so it's not that there is an attrition, but that when it's, it's relative to the other populations, it's actually 
Correct, Good. and also yeah. we're educating kids for longer. Mm -hmm. So an elementary school in a district goes K to five. Mm -hmm. We're educating kids K to eight. One of the uh, standard complaints against you as a person um, is that you made over half a, uh, half a million dollars last year, or you do. Um, does that matter? Well, I think it does matter, and I think we have to we have to invest in talent. Um, we pay our teachers more than the district. We pay our principals more. We pay at the home office more. Mm -hmm. We've got to attract talent, as much talent as humanly possible into the sector. And I think if you want talent, you know, you're going to have to reward people not as much as, you know, an investment banker right. can make on Wall Street. But I don't think because one is doing public education that that necessarily means that one is worth less in terms of compensation. Are you hopeful that public education will improve in, in New York City? Um, you know, I, I, I think it's gonna take really the citizens of New York deciding that they've had enough of educational failure. I am very hopeful though that the public and parents um, are going to demand a change. I think it's just, it's unsustainable to spend this much money to get so few great results. I just don't think you can go on forever like that. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason there hasn't been more outcry is because before charters there were no alternatives. Mm -hmm. Now I think people are seeing uh, that they're between parochial schools and charter schools and moving out of New York and right. doing all these things, parents are voting with their feet one way or another. And I think that's gonna change things.